it's my, it's my favorite thing in the whole world. I love being in physically in the library because it's gonna make me start crying. Because I, somebody asked me when I started writing, and the answer is as soon as I could pick up a pencil. Literally, I was writing funny letters to my grandmother and my cousin, and that was my way of telling stories. So I've been telling stories since I was since I could talk. And, uh, and my, my mom would let me and my sisters, I have three younger sisters, she would let us ride our bicycles to our local library in South Haven, Mississippi, which also happens to be the home of John Grisham. John Grisham and I were in high school together and we had the same English teacher. So that's my claim to fame. Yep, but he's, he, uh, his family uh, went to my church in, in uh, South Haven, Mississippi. And so I, I know him pretty well. I uh, haven't seen him in a long time after he got famous. But anyway, but more recently, over the last six, seven, eight years, I guess, I've been working on uh, these historical series. Uh, the first one that I wrote for Ravel is this one that begins with The Pelican Bride. That's the first book in the series. Um, it is set during the colonial, the French colonial period here. It's about the establishing of the colony of Mobile. Uh, actually, they called it the colony, colony of Louisiana because it was the Louisiana uh, territory at the time. And then the second book in the series is a generational, a couple of generations after the Pelican Bride of the same family. And it is set during the American Revolution. And I don't, most people don't know uh, the uh, what was going on on the Gulf Coast in Pensacola and New Orleans and Mobile during the American Revolution. There was some pretty exciting stuff going on. Going on. And so that's what this one is about. The, her the heroine is a is a French Creole, so she's uh, she's a mixture, a cultural mixture of, of French, uh, Native American, and and Black. Uh, her she's got some slave blood in her background, and then the hero is a Spanish uh, is a Spanish spy uh, set up coming from New Orleans and to find out information to feed to the American patriots up uh, to keep them informed about what's going on, on the Gulf Coast. Third book in that series is called The Magnolia Duchess, and it's a couple of generations down, again, in that same family. It's set right at the end of the War of 1812, and it focuses on mainly the Battle of New Orleans, in which uh, the famous Andrew Jackson was, uh, was the commander there in New Orleans. So it's a pretty exciting story. Uh, I took a break for a couple of years while I was trying to kind of fumble around and figure out what I was gonna do next. And the next series uh, that, that comes uh, from the same publisher is the Daughtry House series. It's called that because the, these, this family of three sisters, Sela, uh, Sela's in this one, Joelle in this one, and then the third one that's the most recent book features the youngest sister, Aurora, uh, of the Daughtry family. They are uh, the, the daughters of a cotton plantation in Tupelo, Mississippi. And this uh, is set five years after the Civil War is over. Uh, their plantation is in ruins. Their, uh, their father is uh, dead and disgraced. Their mother is, is dead and the Yankees are trying to take over the plantation and they're about to lose it and they come up with a plan to keep it in the family by turning it into a resort hotel <laughs> um, with the help of their former slaves. Who live, you know, close by around them, and so they hire these these people, and they have to figure out how to work together, how to learn to forgive one another, how um, how to um, how to cooperate, and, um, and 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 just and become one. It's a it's a spiritual story, as well as they learn how to how how to be Christians in that highly uh, racially charged. Um, time period. It's kind of interesting time period because of right after the Civil War, uh, you might be surprised to know that there was, the Ku Klux Klan was beginning to heat up and beginning, beginning to be active all over the South during that time period, but there was a little, there was a little space when, um, when, when black former slaves and uh, black citizens were actually being elected to office and served as um, state and uh, federal uh, senators and representatives and they were beginning to kind of figure some things out until what happened as I found out in the research is that the, um, the union folks who had pretty much come to kind of keep keep a clamp on things in the south and keep keep 
uh, ex-Confederates from just spreading out and doing the same thing they'd been doing before. With the, they had developed some kind of martial law kinds of things that kind of kept things under control in the South because of economics and just being war weary. They pretty much gave up, moved back to moved back to the North, um, and left the Ku Klux Klan. Unfortunately, free reign to just intimidate, discourage voting, and um, it was it was it was not a good it was not a good scenario. As I said a minute ago, it was a, it was a pretty dark, politically dark period, and it was a little bit hard to find out about some of what was going on then. Um, but it was also hopeful in that you you could find and dig up stories of people who persisted in doing the right thing and insisting on equality and insisting on justice in spite of the terrible things that might happen to them, which is what my three sisters here do. They, uh, they, uh, they pretty much put their lives and their business and their, um, and their reputations at stake in order to, uh, to, try to, to, to try to give dignity and humanity to their former slaves. Uh, so it was a it was a really interesting uh, time period and, and it was it was it was Christians who did this. It was uh, Baptists and Methodists and Pentecostals and um, and Catholics who wanted to educate um, uneducated people. They wanted to help them learn how to take care of themselves. They wanted to help them learn how to uh, to how to make a living, how to how to farm, um, how to protect themselves, how to read um, it was Christians who did that, and it was so it was so it's kind of heartwarming to find out those kinds of things. So that's what that story is basically about. That I was talking about a minute ago. Uh, the World War II story features a. A, a girl who has grown up in Japan as the daughter of missionaries and uh, is brought to the United States for her own safety when World War II breaks out between Japan and China. And uh, in the early 30s, uh, she comes as a teenager to live in Mississippi with her grandmother and um, then winds up going to college in Mississippi, becomes a Navy flight nurse, one of the very first women uh, that uh, went to serve in the military as a nurse in World War II in the South Pacific uh, that, that happened in the early, like, kind of towards the end of the war in the 1940, 44, 45, uh, was, the first, was when they first allowed women to actually go to the, to the battlefront. So it's about her journey um, to get there and then the hero who is a Navy pilot. So that's what I'm working on, lots of research, because I didn't know much about that period to begin with, and I had to learn from ground zero. My husband loves World War II history, and it's all over my house. <laughs> there are books on World War II everywhere, and I've watched so many documentaries, and honestly didn't pay a whole lot of attention, uh, because I was interested in other stuff. But uh, as I've been working on this book, it's really nice to have all that material handy, and it's it's a lot easier to look things up nowadays because you can look online. I used to spend hours and hours and hours at the, at the physical library nowadays. You know, you can find really great articles right there online. Just Google, it's easy. But, yeah, Rebel Heart is the first one. And so it's, um, you can read them in, in mixed up order and, and be fine because I, I try to do a little bit of explanation at the beginning so you know who everybody is but it's really a lot more fun reading